geological processes and geological action is, is most prominent today. It's along stream valleys. This is where things are, are on the move, where the landscape is changing, where you have these pulses of sediment in the form of floods, uh, pulses of water, floodwaters, sediments, nutrients coming down these narrow, sinuous uh, corridors. And this is the other environment, or you know, the other landform region of Iowa, where you do find natural lakes. You find these oxbow lakes that occur along uh, floodplains. At the scale of our landform region map that we've been looking at, only the Missouri and the Mississippi really show up at this scale, but realize that all of Iowa's interior streams have floodplains, terraces, valley sides, and they're filled with alluvial deposits, or material that has been carried and sorted by flowing water. If you look at this cutaway view, you can see that there might be a less mantle on the uplands, that the um, alluvium or the water sorted material in, in a valley um, has occurred. There have been different time periods where the, the valley's been deeper, time periods where the valley's been higher, if you look at the Mississippi, as you, as you look at the Mississippi from here, for example, there are wells that show over 200 feet of alluvium of sand and gravel before you get to the floor of the Mississippi Valley. It's backfilled with that much deposits from, from glacial meltwater activity. You can also go up the tributary valleys of the Mississippi, like the Upper Iowa or the Yellow River or many of the tributary streams and you'll find terraces 60 feet higher than the current floodplain in those valleys that represent times when meltwater was coming down the Mississippi and back flooding into those tributaries and leaving those old floodplain levels um, now observed as terraces in those side valleys. So there's been a lot of change in this landscape through geologic time and especially during uh, glacial meltwater time. Just a quick view of alluvial valleys. <coughs> this is the Upper Iowa River in Al-McKee County. Um, you can see the alluvial or river streams typically have a sinuous pattern. They, they flow. Uh, in northeastern Iowa here, although it's not real apparent, those streams are also following those planes of weakness through the bedrock. If you look at some of the rivers, uh, the courses in northeastern Iowa, they're, they're, they'll go this way for a while, and then all of a sudden they'll turn almost to right angles and go another direction and another direction. They're following those joint patterns, those planes of weakness, those vertical fractures through the rock. So the, the valleys um, are, are interesting in that respect in particular. Uh, on the inside of, right above my finger here, where the river is going like this, you see a tree line slope right on the inside of that curve. That's a, and then a flattening of the landscape that's probably a pasture and then another steepening of the landscape where you come up onto the upland. So that's a terrace, one of these uh, elevated uh, former floodplain levels of the upper Iowa at that, at that inside curve of that particular meander. This is the last of our four big building blocks of the Iowa landscape. We look at glacial drift, the clay-rich material, lots windblown silt, bedrock, sedimentary bedrock of various geologic ages, and then alluvium. Practically everywhere you go in Iowa, you're going to encounter one of those four materials as, as the dominant thing in your region. It might be more than one of those, or a combination of those, or one may dominate. Um, the, the alluvium typically is sorted by the flowing water and will be composed of s sand, gravel, silt, or clay, or a mixture of those things. You can see 
some pretty large cobbles. This is some glacial outwash sand and gravel in Emmett County. And you can see there's some pretty big materials that uh, are carried in glacial in, in the glacial meltwater floods. But it's, it's very typical of, of alluvium, which is relatively soft uh, material, very porous, thus a problem. It's also of an important groundwater source. Uh, and I, I should mention those limestone deposits that we talked about in northeastern Iowa are also important groundwater sources. They're very shallow. They're susceptible to contamination from uh, land apply chemicals, from anything that's going on on the land surface that's going to filter into a sand and gravel or into a karst environment are going to cause problems for people who have wells drilled into those aquifers. a view of the Turkey River, uh, just showing nicely the meanders in the stream and the geological action that's taking place on the inside of the meander. You can see the deposition of point bar deposits that are, are sandy, bare of vegetation. The erosion is taking place on the outside of the meander scars. So as the, as the stream uh, meanders, it's eroding on, on the outer banks and it's depositing on the inner banks under, under normal conditions. If it were to flood, it would occupy that flat area that, that uh, farms there. That would be the floodplain. As you come to the tree line, you're on the steep slope that uh, marks the edge of the valley and then up onto the uh, uplands. And uh, actually in northeastern Iowa, it's possible to just look out across the landscape. And when you're at the mines in Spain, you can look back and see what we call the Silurian Escarpment, um, which I didn't talk about when we had the Paleozoic Plateau map up. But it's a, uh, it's a bluff line. Uh, there, there's another one developed on the Galena Dolomite, on the Prairie de Chine, on some of the other strong cliff-forming cliff sedimentary rock units in northeastern Iowa. It's, it's very easy to, to map these alluvial plains features. And I just wanted to address also that the landscape offers uh, interesting cultural, I mean, it, geology tends to knit together uh, different aspects of, of our environment, and the natural history of them, but also the natural history of them. Indian mounds, on many of these bluff uh, landscapes, particularly along the Mississippi and many of the interior streams as well. And this is Fish Farm Mound State Preserve uh, in Al McKee County, right up in the northeast corner, almost to the Minnesota border, near where the Upper Iowa River comes into the Mississippi. So it was obvious that the Native Americans assigned uh, great importance in their culture to these prominent landscape features that are associated with alluvial valleys. So my take home message here for you today is that the, the geology of a place, the geology of Iowa, the geology of the place where you came from, it, it prods us to look around at the landscape, to consider it more broadly Look out to the horizon, what do you see more deeply, what kind of materials are under your feet, and think about the expanse of geologic time that's, that's the kind of the unique contribution of geology in the, in the natural history arena. It also, geology also increases one's awareness and appreciation of your surroundings. It's, it's like a course in landscape appreciation, like you would take music or, or art appreciation Investing some time in learning about the geology of a place uh, increases your appreciation of where you are, where you live, where you travel, where you work, where you take people on field trips. It has a practical message in that it's important to be an informed decision maker, uh, particularly when dealing with environmental or natural resource issues, understanding of the interaction of land and water and where drinking water supplies come from, and the maintaining the health of a habitat, uh, the geology and hydrology of a place have a lot to do with that. And then finally, as I've, as I've mentioned, understanding the geology 
It's not just a separate, isolated discipline. It really helps to knit together other aspects of our natural and cultural history. And especially as naturalists, where you deal so much with plant and animal communities, it really adds another dimension to your understanding of those as well. So that's my take home message. <laughs> Thank you.